Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrie's Thrifty Farmhouse. If you like decorating on a budget, you're in the right place. Today I'm back at you with more farmhouse home decor DIYs. I'm making a wreath for every style. So whether you like modern farmhouse, shabby chic, primitive, boho, or other styles, I've got something for you. And as always, I'm using budget-friendly materials from my favorite place, the Dollar Tree. If you enjoy this video, I would love for you to like, comment, and hopefully subscribe so I can grow my channel. Now with all the formalities out of the way, let's get started. For my first project, I'm creating a pizza pan welcome sign. I've seen a couple people do these, so I thought I'd give it a try with my own little spin. I started out by covering the pan with Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral. This paint is the perfect shade of grayish, so I use it on a lot of things because it's a great neutral and goes with a lot of stuff. We're going to be layering on other colors, so one coat was enough. Once the paint was dry, I taped off the middle section with painter's tape and covered the top and bottom sections with some Waverly Antique Wax that I mixed with a little water. This thinned out the wax so it would transfer a little color, but was still easy to wipe off. I did two layers of this, brushing it on then wiping it off with a paper towel. Next, I mixed some navel blue paint with water to create a medium that was almost like a stain and used the same technique to brush on and wipe off with a towel. I was really liking the blue, so with the second coat, I brushed it on and let it dry like that instead of wiping it off. Okay, so here's where the project took a turn for the worse. When I removed the painter's tape, a good bit of the paint came off. My plan had been to paint the center section anyway, so I wasn't that bummed about the paint chipping, but I was afraid to use the painter's tape again. I decided to reduce the stickiness by sticking it to my sweatshirt a few times, and when I taped off the section, I pressed only enough to make sure the paint wouldn't bleed through, and only stuck it down at the edge that was up against the part I was painting. For the center section, I used the plaster color from Waverly chalk paint. It's a great off-white color, and because of the contrast between the raw metal and the painted area, I did have to do multiple coats to get good coverage. Okay, so the darned tape struck again and some of the paint came off with this one too. I was determined to keep the project going though, so I continued on with the next step while I thought about how I'd fix the issue. I used a dry brush to distress the center section with the same mineral chalk paint I used on the base layer. For this technique, I used the oldest brush I have that has bits of old paint stuck to it, so it lays down really uneven lines. I dip the brush in the paint and dab most of it off before lightly brushing onto the pan. I move the brush back and forth in the same direction across the surface so it looks almost like wood grain showing through. So it's Dollar Tree ribbon to the rescue. I found this great ribbon in my stash. It's almost an ecru color with darker stripes, so it looks great between the white and the blue. I find that hot glue creates lumps when gluing ribbon down flat like this, so I just used my boys' glue stick from their school materials, and that worked great. I used a little hot glue on the back and trimmed off the excess. For the bow on top, I used this great beige gingham. To form the bow, I created a loop that had an extra tail on each side and scrunched it in the middle. Then I formed a small loop on top and tied around the middle. I don't think I explained that too well, so hopefully the video shows it well enough for you to get my drift. To tie it all together, I used the same striped ribbon I used on the tray around the middle of the bow. Oh, and don't forget to dovetail the tails. Before attaching the bow, I added the word welcome to the middle. I used the same method I've used many times before where I created lettering in my favorite app word swag, printed it out, and then used my Arteza carbon paper to transfer it to the pan. I love using word swag and created a tutorial for it in a previous video, so I'll link that in the description box below if you want to know more about how to use the app. A little note about carbon paper, they are not all created equal. I find this Arteza carbon paper to work much better 
better for a lefty like me. I have a tendency to drag my hand and this is the first carbon paper that didn't create smudges. I have no affiliation with Arteza. I just really love this product. Then I'm using a dark graphite colored Crayola twistable colored pen to fill in the writing. I got it from my boys' craft stash. I decided to do this because I thought black Sharpie would be too stark with the beiges and the blues. And my hubby pointed out afterward that this twistable created lines that almost had a distressed look to them. So I guess it fit right in with the rest of the piece. I glued the bow to the top and zhuzhed it a little to make it look pretty. Then I added a little twine hanger to the back. Don't mind the tape, no one will see that. And the piece was complete. And here it is. I'm super glad I pushed forward after the tape debacle because I really love how this turned out. I may even like it better than my original vision. This is also a pretty versatile piece. You could easily use a different word and turn it into a sign for any room. My next project is a little easier with no snafus, so I'm pretty glad for that. I started out with a splatter screen from Dollar Tree. This is the kind that has the knob in the middle instead of the handle on the side. It's easy to push the screen part out and you're left with this cute hoop. I'm going a little boho with this one, so I started out by painting the hoop with the plaster color by Waverly Chalk Paint. This was super simple and came together quickly. There were a couple places where the metal showed through, so it did take two coats. Dollar Tree has some really great greenery, but sometimes you have to think outside the box. These purple flowers, for example, I'm not sure if I'll use the flower part, but the stems are really pretty. Same with these simple white flowers. The greenery from the two types of stems are very similar, but one is lighter than the other, so when they're paired together, they provide great dimension. In my opinion, this makes them look more real. So I bunched the two types together and did a trial on the hoop to gauge how I wanted to place them. I did cut the stems apart to remove the bulky plastic pieces that held them together. Then I started gluing. All the stems faced out from the middle, so I started at the outside. I rotated between the dark and light pieces to give it a more natural look. And as I moved toward the middle, I overlapped each piece slightly so that none of the glue showed. I repeated this with the other side, working from the outside in and overlapping as I went. When I got to the middle, I used a few of the white flowers that were part of one of the original picks to cover where the stems came together, and that completed the boho hoop wreath. And here it is. This was super easy, but I love how elegant it looks. It's definitely more boho than my typical farmhouse style, but the greens and whites can work with any style decor. For my next project, I'm using one of the foam wreath forms from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be wrapping this with nautical rope, but I first gave it a quick coat of the plaster colored chalk paint by Waverly. Coverage isn't super important, so one coat did the trick. I apologize for missing the first part of wrapping the wreath. I thought I was recording, but apparently I wasn't. There isn't really much to this part though, so you didn't really miss a crucial element to the project. The only thing to really note here is that instead of gluing every second or third time around, I only glued at the ends of the rope. This was a good decision since I'm working around a circle, the rope has a tendency to start to angle, so there's a lot of zhuzhing involved in sliding the rope to fill in where there are awkward spaces. It did take four packs of rope, but these were the shorter lengths of rope that are available at Dollar Tree. I think they're only 6.8 feet. So if you can snag the 11 foot version, you could probably complete this with two packs. Next, I had these wood anchor shapes that were part of a nautical set at Dollar Tree last summer, and I'm just covering them with Waverly Antique Wax. 
Next, I'm creating a bow for the top. I snagged this great navy and white striped ribbon with my Joanne Fabrics haul around Thanksgiving when they had a buy one to get two free sale on ribbon. I'm just using the same method as the other bow. Lay the ribbon down and fold the two sides into the middle. Then create another loop that's slightly smaller and tie a third piece around the middle with the knot in the back. This time I left the tails of the middle piece instead of trimming it off so there were four tails hanging down. And don't forget to give them a dovetail. I added jute twine to the anchors for hangers and used a lighter to burn off the little twine hairs. I was scared to do this the first time I did it, but it works like a charm and don't worry, you won't be starting any fires. And it really does give it a more finished look. I glued the anchors and the bow on and my nautical wreath was complete. And here it is. I know I say this every time, but I just love how this turned out. I wasn't sure if it was too early to start on my nautical theme stuff, but I was reminded by my hubby that people do beach or nautical themes year round. My mother even has a nautical theme in her bathroom. So my last project is a bit of a repeat from a Christmas project I did where I created a wagon wheel out of a Dollar Tree mirror and skewers. I was sorry to have to pack it away with the Christmas stuff so I decided to make a spring version for my bathroom. I started out with one of the round black mirrors from Dollar Tree and I just removed the mirror part. It's really easy to do this because it's just like a picture frame with little metal pieces that you bend back to remove the mirror from the frame. Then I'm using skewers to form spokes. I cut off the tapered ends and then cut the skewers to size. I wanted 12 spokes, so I cut six skewers to size. I left one hole and glued it down to start. There's a perfect little edge on the front side of the frame where the mirror sat, so with the help of a little glue, the skewers fit really easily. Then I cut the remaining five skewers in half and set them out evenly around the wheel, making sure the pieces across from each other looked like a continuation of one line. Then I worked in sections gluing the spokes down. The glue will be visible, so I tried to use as little as possible so that it will blend in with the spokes once it's painted. I also tried to grab all the hot glue stringies as I went because they are pretty visible between the spokes. I've heard that a hairdryer can be used to get these. Let me know in the comments if you've used this trick and whether it worked for you. Next, I cut a disc out of cardboard, but you can use anything you have on hand. This will be the center of the wheel, so I just used a Gatorade lid, which I thought was just the right size. I glued the disc lightly to the front of the skewers and then turned the wheel over and used a generous amount on the back to secure the spokes and the disc together. Then it's time for paint. I used the same plaster color from Waverly that I used in the other projects today. It did take two coats to get good coverage. Then I decided to use this black wax to give the wheel a distressed look. This is my first time using this product and I learned that a little goes a long way so I just needed to get a tiny bit on the paper towel and brush it lightly over the areas I wanted to give a distressed look to. Then I wiped it with a clean part of the paper towel which blended it a little but I found that not as much rubs off like other waxes I've used. I was still happy with the result because this is supposed to look like an old weathered wagon wheel. Then I got these pretty bunches of thyme from Walmart. Each pick has three stems which I cut apart. Then I stuck one piece through the space between the spokes and glued it on the back. I repeated this for all the spaces on the top half of the wheel. I decided to add a pop of color and I had this lavender which I also snagged from Walmart. I put one in the middle and one on either side and glued them in the back as well. And then the project was complete. And here it is. I think this might be my favorite piece from today. It looks so cute on our bathroom counter and I love using greens and whites in the winter time, but the lavender really adds a perfect pop of color. This really makes me anxious for spring to arrive. 
So there you have it. I really appreciate you joining me today, and I hope these wreaths inspired you for your spring decor. Let me know in the comments which one you think would work in your home. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps support my channel. And be sure to hit that notification button so you can stay up to date with my content. I have lots more in store for this winter, including some other great pieces that will help you transition into spring. So stay tuned for those. See you next time. Bye!